but it gives you no more right to interject across the house when I'm on my feet. I have received during question time an urgent question in relation to a potential security outbreak. The guidance I use is whether this matter needs to be answered today and in view of the fact it is biosecurity, uh, the next opportunity the House would have to have a question asked would of course be two weeks. Uh, it would be next week, which in light of a biosecurity position I don't think is satisfactory. The first question was submitted, as I understand it, right on the start of question time by the Right Honourable Winston Peters, but the information I have had is that you, the member did not at the time supply a copy to the Minister, the Honourable Nathan Guy. If that is the case, then I have to rule the question out of order because speakers, uh, standing order 3881 has not been complied with. Sub I will hear from the member. Speaker, when the um, House was convening today, I looked around for Mr Guy. I've got other copies here to give him one. No, but you weren't then. That's my point. Yes. Um, a nice try, but not good enough on this occasion. I, I've noticed the member, the minister's been here throughout most of question time and certainly was here for a question. So the standing orders have not been complied with, and that is quite clear to me. Subsequently, and subsequently later, a, a urgent question was submitted by the Honourable Damien O'Connor and I have been informed that at the same time a copy of that question was given to the Honourable uh, Nathan Guy. So the urgent question is allowed. A question from the AIM Honourable Damien O'Connor is in order and will be asked. Point of order, the Honourable Simon Burgess. I soon heard what you said, Mr Speaker. There is a point, though, in relation to uh, Mr O'Connor's uh, urgent question. I think it's in relation to um, the lateness of it. If you look at the Speaker's rulings, speaking ruling uh, uh, 2033, what's very clear there is that, uh, the, the, and we can go on actually further rulings there, that uh, members should be trying to ensure there's a reasonable opportunity for the question to be in the Speaker's and the Minister's hands. Now, of course, what Mr Peters did uh, the Right Honourable Winston Peters did was he did it um, within reasonable time, I think at two o'clock or just before, um, uh, but he failed because he didn't uh, deliver it to the Minister. But in terms of these, these rulings, what we have here is one, if I'm you know, watching when uh, Mr O'Connor went forward it's some ten minutes ago, I'd argue it's not within the Speaker's rulings. I'd also make the point, uh, Mr Speaker, in terms of Speaker's rulings 456, um, that th what's very clear about urgent questions is that they're for something that is about to happen that needs uh, urgent action. Here I accept the point Mr Speaker makes, which is that uh, biosecurity is incredibly important. But what's also true is now there's government actions in relation to it, and it could be forensically examined by the members uh, opposite should they wish next week. And I'd make that point in relation to this as well. And I will hear from the other one. But, Mr. Mr. Speaker, speaking to the point of order, uh, I, I just wanted to defend you. You have accepted the question, and at that point, uh, any, any uh, approach from the government to have you reverse is disagreeing with the ruling that you've made and is most inappropriate. And I, I, if I could add one more point to the comments made by Mr. Mallard, for the benefit of the Honourable Simon Bridges, it is my role to judge whether the, the urgent question should be asked. And taking into account that, I've looked at the uh, question, the tone of the question, and I've also taken into account the public interest in this matter. And I think public will be very interested in this, uh, the situation that's developing in Northland. They'll be interested in the question, and I hope they're equally interested in a very satisfactory answer. Point of order, the right on the Speaker, Wednesday. given the urgency of the matter, I seek leave uh, to ask my question of the Minister responsible to answer it. Well, I'm going to put the leave. Leave is sought by the Right Honourable Winston Peters to ask his question. Um, it would then have to be in, instead of the uh, question from the Honourable um, Damien. Order. Yeah, I think that's a fair call. So we could have, well, order. I'm going to put the leave. The leave has been sought by Mr. Winst uh, the Honour Right Honourable Winston Peters to ask his urgent question. Is there any objection to that being asked? There is. 
The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Bio for Biosecurity, what action has the Minister initiated to alert the public to the serious threats uh, from the biosecurity incursion of myrtle rust identified near Kerry Kerry? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Mr Speaker, this is a very important issue. I'm happy to answer the member's question. Uh, what I would say is uh, Minister Barry and I have just done a, a joint press release and talked to numerous media about the importance of this issue. The member may also be aware, or he may not have read, the Biosecurity 2025 document that I released in July last year that talks on page 11 about the importance of myrtle rust. It is a very important, serious fungal disease and uh, we have stepped up a response. It was only a matter of time, uh, because it's been in Australia since 2010, and this is an airborne fungal disease, that it would reach New Zealand. And, well, if the member wants to take a question, he should get on his feet and take one. No, no, that won't be happening. Uh, so, so as a result, as a result uh, Mr Speaker, uh, we have stepped up the response in Kiri Kiri, uh, we've worked very constructively with the uh, nursery owner and his staff who did the right thing. It's been confirmed that we have uh, myrtle rust in that nursery. Uh, MPI have uh, established a uh, movement control on that nursery. It will be sprayed with uh, fungicide and we're reaching out to the community of Kiri Kiri and indeed uh, the local members because I gave the courtesy of ringing the local members before uh, the government went public with this announcement this afternoon. I rang Kelvin Davis and I took the opportunity to ring uh, Winston Peters who knew I was calling but was out on Lambton Quay getting lunch. Order. <laughs> Point of order. The right honourable Mr Speaker, I think this matter is serious and I do not think that the minister being a smart aleck but frivolous about the matter, he should be allowed to behave like that in the way in the House. I know he's an incompetent fool, order, but order, we're not taking... Order. Order. The public will judge the quality of the answer. Further supplementary from the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Mr Speaker, thank you. Order. We now have an interruption from Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order. Thank you. Mr Speaker, you would, have, you would have heard the Minister invite me to ask a question. I seek leave to ask him that specific question. Okay. In his answer, he said if the member wants to ask a question, yeah, he, he should. So I seek the leave, leave to ask that minister the leave, question. Leave is sought to ask an additional supplementary question to the minister. Is there any objection? From my mark. There's objection. The Honourable Damien O'Connor, one supplementary question. Thank, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr, Mr. Speaker, um, can the Minister give any indication as to the potential uh, spread of this disease? And given that it's airborne uh, in nature of that infection, uh, what's the likely uh, radius of control that he has put in place? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, ye yes, I can uh, reassure the member that MPI and DOC are taking this very, very seriously. As I already alluded to in the answer to the primary, the nursery owner did the right thing, supplied photographic evidence through to MPI. MPI arrived yesterday very quickly and took samples and then confirmed it overnight that indeed it was myrtle rust. They will move out from the epicentre in a very controlled way. Right now they're mapping all of the myrtle trees. There's about 130 uh, sites that are already monitored by MPI high-risk sites in Northland. They will be revisited. DOC are moving into the conservation estate. We're reaching out to all of the public that have purchased any tree stock from uh, this particular nursery or the other nurseries in Kerry Kerry to go and investigate uh, those trees that they have planted for any signs of uh, myrtle rust. So, we are taking it very, very responsibly. We're doing all we can, but it will be a challenge to eradicate this because it is windborne and evidence from uh, other countries that have it, it's very difficult to indeed eradicate it. But because the nursery owner moved fast and because MPI has moved fast and with the public support, 
we'll be doing everything possible to see, indeed, if we can eradicate it. No, no, I've allowed one supplementary question, that's it. No, order, I have allowed one supplementary question, and that is it. And that concludes questions for oral answer. Oh, we have a further point of order, Stephen Browning. Mr Speaker, um, I felt that the Minister didn't answer fully. He has indicated in his media release, excuse me, it's a particular point of order, that it's airborne and probably arrived that way from Australia rather than a, a lapse in biosecurity to a particular order, nursery. Order. Can you answer order. that? No, this is not a point of order. It's an attempt to have a further supplementary question. I call on government order of the day number one.